Uh, and uh, now to continue, uh, Polina Mamoshina, who is also from um, uh, in Silico Medicine, uh, uh, head of the biomarker development at the company, uh, he will she will uh, speak about um, explainable uh, deep aging clocks as models of uh, hypothesis generation and aging research. Uh, please, Polina, if you could uh, make it shorter, we kind of. Uh... I I will try to be brief. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I have to first make a disclaimer that uh, I'm currently Deep Longevity, it's a spin-off company of Insilica Medicine, so I'm no longer part of Insilica. And um, again, uh, because we've been acquired by a public company, I have to make a disclaimer that it's not um, uh, uh, financial advice in any way, and um, you cannot use my slides to you as a financial advice. Um, so a bit of a company. Uh, again, just to recap, we focus on deep aging clocks, and my presentation will mainly cover those, and will be founded by, by Alex Javankov, um, as well as Silica, who is also a long-term um, mentor of mine. So um, just to, to summarize what we have in the field in terms of markers of aging, so there are mul multiple of those that has been proposed since 2013. Uh, that was mainly driven by the accessibility of the data type in the public domain. Um, at the same time, all of them, they were developed using uh, standards, uh, shallow machine learning uh, techniques. And now uh, we are experiencing a revolution in algorithms. So there are new types of algorithms available, um, including the deep learning based algorithms, uh, deep neural networks and reference learning algorithms. And they are the one who are generating most of the hype around AI but they are also the one who are generating the, the credible advances. And um, now we believe there is a revolution in deep learning uh, in, in healthcare area. Uh, so why it's happening right now, why most of those um, ideas uh, came from 1980, it's mainly because we have advanced algorithms that we can use to train them on. Uh, before it was only theory, uh, we cannot actually train them. Uh, we also have GPU computing. It's only possible to train them with GPU computing and big data, so millions of samples to train because they're exceptionally data hungry. And um, uh, fortunately, regulatory already recognized that. And um, uh, it, since 2017, approved uh, 14 uh, purely AI-based tools. So most of the, mo many of them were based on conversion neural nets, but also other uh, deep neural networks um, used to develop those. Uh, ranging from the Arteris cardio MRI based uh, heart interpretation to one of the recent approval um, that Apple um, gained um, for the upper uh, atrial fibrillation detection, which is actually now available uh, for someone who is using the um, Apple Watch. And for most of those um, tools, uh, FDA granted fast track approval. So we believe that having a deep learning as a, um, uh, as a type of algorithms used for biomark development actually going to give us an advantage uh, when the field will be ready talking to the regulatory. And uh, since 2017, luckily, many of those uh, deep learning based clocks has been um, developed. Uh, we as a team uh, contributed a lot, but also other teams um, be using completely different data types uh, to, to build them. And um, apparently we end up in a situation that there are a lot of aging clocks proposed. Uh, so which one we actually use. So we believe that there is no universal marker. And if we um, analyze the uh, data, even for people same chronology age, and that was a really nice study done by Professor Dandelsky uh, and published in 2018, uh, when he and his team analyzed the people same chronological age, healthy people, um, using completely different uh, markers of aging. And what he saw was interesting that even between different methylation clocks, there was little or no correlation. Um, while if we analyze the longitudinal data, we see that clocks are actually ticking in, in the right direction. So people without interventions, they're getting older, not only chronologically, but also biologically. So they're working and they just measure different, different processes. That's why in a company, we focused on a really diverse portfolio of clocks. Uh, ranging from really simple data types like um, f f for like facial images um, to up um, to really complex um, transcriptome data. 
Um, and uh, again, we proposed uh, some of those clocks already, we published them. Um, uh, one of the recent one that we published was for microbiome, uh, when we showed that um, not only we can actually predict uh, age of healthy individuals uh, with their um, whole genome sequence uh, profile of microbiome in their gut, but also um, we can um, see that the uh, individuals with type 1 diabetes actually predict older by their microbiome. So they sort of show signs of accelerated aging according to the microbiome. This model was um, somehow accurate, but what is really interesting to do with this model is actually um, that because it's a computation model, we can explore how the changes in input parameter would affect the, the, the output. In this way, we can actually um, design those trajectories uh, for each of the species in, in, in the data to see um, which of them, uh, of them actually promote uh, useful state um, and which of them actually prom promoting the, 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 let's say, the, the, the negative uh, state, I mean, causing acceleration of age to the model. And that's how we're able to classify them but send negative, send a positive status. What it was really interesting also to understand is that um, once we identify uh, where uh, the in individual is on this on those trajectories, we can actually suggest them in which direction they should move, and they should shift their microbiome profile uh, to to actually to get younger, at least for for a deep neural network. While with microbiome it's a bit tricky because it's not like we have a lot of um, interventions with known actions on on, on the on the species. Uh, at the same time, you know, we had other data types that we can actually experiment with. And those are um, uh, clocks that are based on clinical blood tests. Again, um, if we look at the data itself, um, blood markers um, are not markers of aging by themselves. Of course, we, we see trends there, like for example, albumin um, tend to, to decrease with age, uh, cholesterol uh, tend to increase with age, glucose tend to increase with age. At the same time, um, it's a bit hard to actually get age as a number from those values um, unless you have a model that actually capture the non-linearities between uh, changes in blood marker levels and age. And we did it with ensemble deep neural networks. And uh, now we also show that uh, not only we can uh, predict age of healthy individuals uh, rather accurately with a simple blood test, but also that smokers are predicted older, twice as old compared to you know, smoking peers, uh, that the um, um, patients who are predicted older, they have higher um, five-year um, mortality rates and um, uh, lower life expectancy another way around. But what other things we can do, again, because there are computation models, uh, we can actually uh, design uh, those trajectories the same way we do this for microbiome for, for blood. And uh, this is where it's uh, getting really interesting because for blood, we actually know um, what kind of interventions we can suggest uh, to, to, to shift blood profiles. And um, uh, by doing this, we believe that we are introducing the optimal uh, uh, blood, blood levels rather than a reference one. Uh, reference uh, ranges, of course, are really important when we define the pathology state. But if we think of wellness and the optimal performance, we actually have to focus on optimal uh, blood parameters. And here's an example uh, for one of the um, analysis um, that, that we did um, for, for, for this particular individual. Uh, um, she can actually got uh, at least five years younger by, by, by shifting their blood parameters and at the same time only a total cholesterol was out of range was uh, one of those uh, parameters that was um, abnormally high and recommended to, to change if we, she would go to a standard care practitioner so we believe those are really 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 powerful tools um, to, to do those kind of simulations so just to, to summarize um, again, there are multiple aging clocks available, and um, this conference is uh, also one of those examples. Uh, a lot of people presented completely different approaches to biomarker development, uh, but we believe that um, using AI 
um, and deep neural networks in particular, we can actually design our next generation aging crops. And they are not only useful for, uh, for age prediction, but also for identifying those variables that are associated with age the most. So ultimately, um, because they're computational uh, tools, we can actually use them to simulate the effect of those changes uh, in the input parameters or on the outcome, and therefore it, it, uh, even like simulate uh, interventions. So we believe that um, those deep aging clocks uh, can be the one uh, that can be used to, to run uh, so-called in silica clinical trials, and uh, therefore would be really useful um, in, in clinical trials in, in general. And um, on a side note, um, some of those clocks that I showed you, and again, uh, algorithms that are optimizing blood parameters, they are integrated into the, our, our young AI web um, platform, and it's live now. So we welcome early adopters uh, to register there and provide us with feedback. Uh, it's totally free uh, now for early adopters. So um, you can try it on, you can try it with, with your own uh, data. So thanks for your attention, and uh, I'm open. I hope I have some time for, for questions. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, one question from Phil: um, Other issues depending on the chronological age of the patient versus available data. For example, is it possible to be accurate from age 18 to 80? Uh, in addition, might there be more emphasis on life-threatening biomarkers? Right, so there is a, um, it's a good question. So there is a, a common problem for, for those kind of models uh, called linear fit problem that uh, usually on the tails of distribution, the model is less accurate. And um, it happened to be the case that for most of the data sets out there, the distribution uh, for ages is normal. It's meaning that you have a median for, I don't know, 40, 50 years old and most of the samples out there uh, for them, but for, for people who are over 80s, there are less samples available, so the model tends to mispredict them. Um, at the same time, um, there are ways to, 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 to correct those um, uh, predictions for, for the tails of distribution, so uh, there, are, there are tricks there that you can, you, you can computationally apply to, to avoid any problems uh, with those uh, people. But in general, we should also expect people who are over 80 or 90 to be a bit biologically younger compared to others, because it's already a, a rather long lifespan if we're just thinking of like average uh, lifespan, I mean, depending on the country, but still. Okay. Thank you very much, Polina. Uh, I